Hi, I'm Jenny, and in today's video, I'm going to answer whether Grand Seiko watches are any good, why they are so expensive, and where exactly the difference is between Seiko and Grand Seiko. So let's get started. And real quick for transparency reasons, I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with Grand Seiko, but they kind of let me borrow the watches for this video. So thank you to Grand Seiko. Right, so I'm pretty sure that no other brand has been requested as much as Grand Seiko on my channel. So here it is. Though Grand Seiko has been around for quite some time, there are still a handful of questions persistently remaining when it comes to the Japanese manufacturer. I am sure many of you can agree when I say that I'm rather new to the brand myself. So that's why I have split this video into three parts to give you and me a good entry point into this watchmaker's history, philosophy and horology as well as answering your most frequently asked questions about the brand. Let's have a look at the first watch I have here today, the Grand Seiko SLGH003GS 60th anniversary edition that is going to help us out getting to know a bit of Grand Seiko's history and heritage. The name already gives it away as this watch celebrates the 60th anniversary of Grand Seiko itself as the first ever Grand Seiko was released in 1960. But the message is also in the rest of the name. The watchmakers at Seiko wanted to create the very best watch of which they were capable of and so they named their creation Grand Seiko to symbolize the achievement and that's where the entire line started. Since the 1960s, Grand Seiko has proved time and time again that they are not the ones who would ever rest on their laurels. So let's take a closer look at the 60th anniversary edition. It shares design cues of the first Grand Seiko all packed into a stainless steel case and fitted with the classic Grand Seiko blue dial. I would say that one of the biggest Grand Seiko hallmarks is making perfection look so effortless. No edge or border is simple on this one. Every angle is smoothed out, which not only makes for a great look, but also for a very comfortable wear when it comes to the bracelet. The three link bracelet feels very smooth and ends in a fold clasp with a push button release that shows the Grand Seiko emblem at the top. And I have to say that I'm happy that they have refrained from polishing parts of the bracelet and kept the brushed finish so the main part, the dial of the watch, can really shine without any distractions. Like I've said before, the 60th anniversary edition dial comes in a very deep blue color with a sunburst finish. The hands and hour markers resemble the design of the first Grand Seiko with a bit more thickness and details added. I mean, look at the hour markers at 12. The riffle on here is insane. A nice contrast to the very cool toned rest of the watch is the golden Grand Seiko lettering on top as well as the bright red seconds hand that ticks across the dial. With this watch you also get a date at 3 o'clock that has been treated with the same amount of attention as the rest of the watch. The movement inside is Grand Seiko's own and entirely new high beat automatic caliber 9SA5 with a power reserve of 80 hours. According to Grand Seiko it runs with an accuracy of about plus 5 to minus 3 seconds per day and given the water resistance of 10 bar I wouldn't recommend going scuba diving with this one if you have planned it. All in all you can tell that the 60th anniversary not only looks back at what they have achieved but also confidently moves forward I would say. With this watch you will get the essence and heritage of Grand Seiko without having to pass on the perks of wearing one of the best creations modern watchmaking has to offer. The only issue I have with this one is the color scheme. It's not like any of these colors clash, they look really beautiful together but for some reason the watch face reads very old-fashioned to me. I think I would have loved if they would have added loom to the hands or our markers to give it a bit more of a fresher look but that's just my two cents. Okay so now that we understand where they are coming from and where the differences is between Seiko and Grand Seiko I want to touch on the are Grand Seiko watches any good questions I get quite often. Let's pull out the Grand Seiko SPGE 255 to answer that question. What you get here is one of the latest GMT watches out of Grand Seiko's sport watches collection. Therefore the lines of the case are less I kind of want to say playful compared to the 60th anniversary from before with a higher percentage of brushed instead of polished parts and you also get a crown at 4 o'clock instead of 3 o'clock. 
The bezel on this watch is made from a blue ceramic that frames the equally blue dial with a sunburst finish. As this is a GMT, you get the 24 hour markings not only on the bezel, but also on the rehot on the inside on which Grand Seiko flipped the color scheme for each half of the day. This GMT is also where we can see how Grand Seiko works with luminous material. The hour markers as well as all hands except for the second hand is equipped with LumiBright. And what's also really cool and what made this one stand out to me are the light blue color accents Grand Seiko went for on this watch. This happy light blue on the GMT hand and on the GMT lettering on the dial really brightens up the watch and I would say that this choice of color helps to show that this is a modern Grand Seiko given that the design of the hands and our markers are rather I would say classic looking in my opinion. What's really special about this one is also the use of space on the dial which tends to separate people into two cams it seems. For one you have the date at four o'clock, the lettering on both the top and the bottom of the dial as well as a power reserve indicator sitting in between eight and nine o'clock. So you're either camp symmetry and dislike the placement on this watch or your camp put this stuff wherever and you're simply loving how Grand Seiko plays their complications here. Either way, I think it's safe to say that this is a very coherent watch face that creates a good balance between accentuating the most important parts like the GMT hand and the hour markers and kind of toning down additional features like the borderless date window and the fine power reserve indicator. The look is being completed with your classical three link bracelet and as this is a GMT after all, you also get polished sides on your middle link as well and you'll also get a bigger clasp with a push button release and a steel case bag that displays Grand Seiko's line emblem instead of showcasing the movement, which is a bit sad given that we could have been looking at one of watchmaking's biggest inventions of the 21st century, the spring drive movement. If you want to know how exactly a spring drive movement works, I highly recommend the video Teddy Baldassar has made, which I will link for you down below, but let me give you the abridged version of this. Grand Seiko's spring drive movement basically brings together the best of both worlds. The autonomous provision of power we know from mechanical watches and the unparalleled precision of quartz movements. So a spring drive movement uses a mainspring like any other mechanical watch, but they are using a tri-synchro regulator that precisely controls the power not only released by the mainspring, but also two other types of energy, including a quartz oscillator. This complex invention results in a second hand that does not tick like you would expect from a quartz movement, but it also doesn't beat like on other mechanical watches. Instead, you get the sweeping, almost hypnotic motion because you don't have the back and forth motion from the pallet fold, but a single rotational direction, which allows the seconds hand to sweep. And on top of that, you also have the GMT complication, a date, a power reserve indicator, and a three day power reserve. So I think it is safe to say that with Grand Seiko, we have surpassed the are they any good stage a long time ago. What you get here is the combined experience and knowledge of watchmaking from over 140 years from one of the world's best watchmakers. So yeah, Grand Seiko really is good. Right, so we know that Grand Seiko watches are definitely good and that they can look back at a very long history and heritage. We can take our findings and see how that translates to current pricing and whether or not we can agree with that. So let's have a look at one of the most popular Grand Seiko watches for this one the one and only SBGA 211, AKA the Snowflake. It's straight out of the Heritage Collection and there are many reasons as to why this one has made it to the top. Similar to the GMT, you get a simpler K-shape, Zaratsu polished flanks and bezel. The bracelet looks also very similar with its three links, the partially polished middle link, but the clasp on this one is not as wide, but much more smaller and rectangular, like the one on the 60th anniversary, but without the golden highlights. But the catch here is that it's not made from stainless steel like the other two, but from high intensity titanium. So just like a snowflake itself, it is very lightweight, weighing only 100 grams in total. And that is just as little as a chocolate bar from where I come from. It didn't get the nickname for its weight though. It's obviously because of its beautiful snow white dial. Created in their in-house dial workshop, this one really stands out, not only within the Grand Seiko lineup, but I would say within the entire watch world in general. The effect that makes this surface look like fresh fallen snow is achieved by building up multiple layers. Cutting through that snow are the super sharp and pointy hour minutes and seconds hands, as well as the hour markers. And I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but look at that precision. 
When you get close enough, you can see that the lettering below the Grand Seiko logo, as well as the words Spring Drive, and the minute markings are applied, which to me brings out the snow-like surface effect even more. It also looks like that the surface has a very subtle iridescent shine to it, something that's really visible when looking at the power reserve indicator in between 7 and 8 o'clock. The fine lines seem to reflect the light back like the surface of a Pro would do, which is a nice soft contrast to the very sharp rest of the watch. I'm also very happy to see that they have kept the date framed and at 3 o'clock instead of moving it to a different place. It creates a nice balance to the other thick hour markers at 12, 6 and 9 o'clock. The sweeping icy blue seconds hand is powered by the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Caliber 9R65 with a power reserve of 72 hours and an accuracy of about plus minus one second per day or 15 seconds per month. Luckily this time we also get to see the movement through the case back. With this Aspie GA211, you get a watch with one of the most advanced types of movements, a unique dial texture, a case and bracelet made from titanium, hands and hour markers that have been finished and applied by hand, as well as checked again by a person, and all that for 6,000 euros or 5,800 US dollars. So given everything I have mentioned before and considering the level of craftsmanship, innovation, attention to detail and precision, I think one can understand the price tag attached to those watches, but here's the thing. I get why some people would ask that question when first seeing a Grand Seiko and not knowing much about the brand. Because Grand Seiko is all about the details, especially the small ones. To really and fully appreciate these watches, you have to take a closer look. If not, they are simply very good looking watches with the word Seiko attached to their logo. Justified or not, but many associate Seiko first and foremost with more affordable watches, so seeing the 6k price tag might come as a shock at first. So I would argue that Grand Seiko watches are objectively speaking expensive, but you get a lot for your money if not more compared to other watches in that price range. So here we have it, three Grand Seiko watches to answer three of the most pressing questions when it comes to Grand Seiko. I'm not sure whether it's simply because of the geographical distance or the fact that the level of perfection made these watches feel a bit distant at first to me. But the more you read and learn about the incredible work of the watchmakers at Grand Seiko, the more you start to understand them, which ultimately brings you closer to the watch. I think it would be great to see them explore the below 39mm size range a bit more, but I guess that goes for most brands out there. Anyways, what do you think about Grand Seiko? Would you say the specs justify the price tag? Would you go for a Grand Seiko? And if not, why? As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And that is it for this video today. Thanks again to Grand Seiko for letting me borrow the watches for this video. If you have liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.